Hi, and today I'm going to be going over a formula that I came up with which looks at differentiation of polynomials. It's quite nice to derive and looks kind of, I think it looks kind of cool anyway. So I'm calling it the VPN rule, the VPN power rule or the VPN power rule of differentiation. And first, I need to look at something which is known as permutations and doesn't seem to have much to do with differentiation. So what a permutation is, is like an arrangement. And so if I was to ask how many permutations there are of R objects from a set of N distinct objects, then what would the answer to this be? Well, say I got three objects, A, B and C. And I want to look at the number of permutations there are which consist of two objects. So I've got AB, but also BA, which is, and in permutations, they're counted as distinct from each other because for a permutation or an arrangement, if I've got person A in my, to the left and person B to the right, that looks different than person B to the left and person A being to the right. A and B being chosen is different from me choosing B than A. And similarly, this holds for BC and CA are different and CA and AC are different. So overall, three, well, I wanna say P2 of three permute two, if you wanna think of it that way, is equal to well, six. Say I call this NPR as I call this N3P2. What is NPR going to be equal to? Well, say I've got N objects and I want to count the number of permutations there are of R objects, i.e. the number of ways of me picking but then also ordering R objects so that the order in which they're selected does matter. For example, how many ways are there of me, if you want to think of it in a real life context, say you've got N athletes competing in the 100 meters and you only give out rankings to the people in the top eight, the people who make the final. And the people who haven't made the final, we're not caring about semi-finals or if they're in the heats, they've just they're just counted as not chosen for the final. They haven't made the final. But then if you made the final, you're given an allocated slot. You're either first, you've got the gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal, or you come fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth. So, and likewise, you've got that here. Or say your final, instead of the final having just eight people, we can say the final has our people. And clearly people are distinct from one another, so this holds. So we've got our N athletes, athlete one, athlete two, athlete three, athlete, athlete four, all the way to athlete N. So how many ways are there of me picking R of these athletes to be in the final, to be ranked? Well, from my binomial expansion videos, you might recall that the number of ways of choosing R elements from a set of N distinct elements is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R or in brackets factorial. And well, if that's true, then the number of ways of me choosing people for the final is just N choose R, but then I've got R random athletes and I'm gonna call them B1 or F1, F2, F3, all the way to FR minus one and FR. So I've got R athletes in the final. These are my N total athletes, and I've got R athletes in the final. And these R athletes are one of, each of these R athletes are one of these N athletes. So for example, we could say F2 is equal to A5. That doesn't matter, it's a subset of my, Finals set is a subset of the athlete set or my finalist set, if you want to call it like that. So 
we've got entries are ways of choosing people to be ranked or choosing people to be in my special set or chosen set to be in my op in my set of art objects which i'm going to permute and arrange but then how many ways are there of me arranging these art objects because each arrangement of these objects is now classed as distinct well we can see here that we've got f1 f2 f3 f4 we've got our objects and so there are like in my binomial expansion video as i showed there we've got our possibilities for first place and then obviously the same person who got first place can't also come second or third place or fourth place so we've got our minus one choices given we've already got a gold medalist for our silver medal and then our minus two for our bronze medal and so on and so on and so on until we get just one person left for my final slot look if all my other n minus one slots have been assigned so we've got our factorial which is the number of ways of arranging objects in a line if you want to think of it like that as well npr is equal to the number of ways of choosing athletes and choose are for each choice of athletes there are our factorial ways of ranking those athletes because well this is just one out of n choose r possible subsets and each subject each subset has r factorial different possible arrangements so the number of permutations of r objects from a set of n objects is n choose r times r factorial which is equal to if you want to expand out what n choose r is and n choose r like npr is written like this n choose r can be written as n capital C R like that to show that it's choosing we end up with N P R is equal to N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial times R factorial and we'd end up that this is just N factorial over N minus R factorial or rather you could expand this to be N times N minus 1 times N minus 2 times N minus 3 times dot 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 times n minus r plus 1 and you can even derive this a different way since i've got n athletes in total i could say that one of these athletes was first place clearly because one of those athletes is going to come first out of the remaining n minus 1 there's going to be one athlete that comes second so the n minus 1 choices for my second one place given first place has been assigned and that continues all the way to my r r slot at which point we have n minus r plus one athletes from which we can choose we have to choose one to be the fine the last place in the final or come up overall or eighth overall whatever r is and so we can see and then for the rest of the slots well they have no label they are just unassigned we don't care about them and so they all at least in the eyes of a viewer will just be classed with the same result but they did not make the final so we can see from this as well npr is just n factorial over n minus r factorial or this product and this also tracks with 3p2 that's 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 in brackets factorial 6 and it's a bit of a nice thing to note that given we've got our athlete set since we pick our people to be in the finals set or finalist set or to make the final we've got n minus r people who are kind of losers in a way or guaranteed losers or unranked people and they you could technically see this as splitting our athlete set into two new subsets where each element is either in the finalist subset or not in the finalist subset in the loser subset and with n choose r this is almost like this finalist subset is my chosen subset and these n minus r elements are my unchosen or not chosen subset and n choose r since it's the number of ways of me choosing elements r elements it's like i'm either assigning the label of chosen or not chosen to my n distinct elements they're either in my chosen subset for example, AB would be my chosen subset here, but C would be my unchosen subset. If you want to draw that in red. Here again, C would be my unchosen subset. 
Here, B, C, A is my would technically make up my unchosen subset. The single element unchosen subset if my chosen subset is C, A. And so, the number of ways of choosing elements is kind of like the number of ways of me splitting these elements into two subsets. They're either chosen or they're not chosen. But if they're chosen, I don't care which order they've been chosen in. So they're still athletes, but them being the first athlete chosen, when I'm looking at choice of and choose R, which would be the number of ways of me choosing people for the final, I don't care whether you're in the, you're, you came first or second or third or fourth. I just care that you're in the final. And that's what N choose R is. I, you're just chosen in my set. You're chosen in the squad or in the first, in the starting lineup. And then your other sub, the remaining elements make up your substitutes bench for the people who couldn't make it to the final, for example. And so you can see perhaps more clearly that since this, arranging these elements is n minus r factorial because there are n minus r elements, you could perhaps see that to choose r elements from a group of n distinct elements, the way of choosing it now is just n choose r because I've kind of assigned in what order they've been chosen and what order they've been unchosen. So hopefully you can see that n choose r is just n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial now in this context rather than n choose r just being the binomial coefficient because you've got n factorial elements n elements which can be arranged in n factorial ways and say i've labeled my n slots distinctly as one two three four five dot 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 to r and then we've got r plus one r plus two all the way to n and then so i place my n, uh, n athletes into those n slots but then in, re in reality these labels for my slots don't actually exist and so i have to divide by r factorial and n minus r factorial so that's probably a nicer way of me explaining why the binomial coefficients also represent the number of ways there are of me choosing r elements from a set of n distinct elements how does that link into differentiation at all? Well, since I've called this the VPN power rule of differentiation, you might be able to deduce that this has got something to do with the power rule here, which states that if, and I'm going to let y now equal x to the power of, instead of n, I'm going to let it equal x to the power of capital V. Since I'm, talk about n, I'm talking about n distinct objects, this only holds for non-negative integers v. Not all rational values of v. And the reason why I'm going to define it in this way is because your, your calculator can only do npr for non-negative integers value of n and r, where r is less than or equal to n. Otherwise, this statement doesn't quite make sense. And so, if that's true, then what's dy by dx? dy by dx would be, by the power rule, v times x to the power of v minus 1, correct? And similarly, the derivative of this with respect to x, the second derivative, dy, d squared y by dx squared, would be equal to what? We bring the power down and reduce the power by 1, as your teachers might say. So we've got v times, since we can also use the comma, this rule of differentiation, which you can see proved in a different video, d squared y by dx squared is equal to v times v minus 1 times x to the power of v minus 2. And similarly, d cubed y by dx cubed is equal to what? And you might start to see where npr would come in, or in this case, vpn. So I'm going to state that the vpn power rule states that d the n, capital nth derivative of y with respect to x, or where y is equal to x to the power of v, is equal to vpn times x to the power of v minus n, or it's equal to zero. And this is, it's only equal to v to vpn times x to the power of v minus n, when n is less than or equal to v. 
So then this is true for any values of n greater than v. And I'll show you why in a bit. But to prove this, so these are my base cases. And the reason I'm calling them my base cases, you can see that the, power, the VPM power rule holds for these values, correct? So assume the kth derivative of y with respect to x is equal to VPK times x to the power of v minus k. And why am I assuming that? Well, it's to show you that d k plus 1 of y over d with respect to x, so the k plus first derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to the derivative with respect to x of this function, of the k derivative. And a key thing to note is, here, k is less than v. And k and v are integers, non-negative integers. This implies that we've got d by dx. Since that's true, we've got d by dx of v, p, k, which is a constant, times x to the power of v minus k, which is equal to v, p, k, times d by dx of x to the power of v minus k, which is equal to, by the power rule, v p k times times v minus k times x to the power of v minus k minus 1. So by using the power rule, we can see this is true. Since n p r is just n factorial over n minus r factorial, we will write this out and in the same way. v p k is v factorial over v minus k factorial times v minus k times x to the power of v minus k plus 1 in brackets there because to show that if the k term so if this holds for n equals k then this holds for n equals k plus 1 that's what i'm trying to show right and this is known as proof by induction since i want to show that if it holds for the k term it has to hold for the k plus first term but to show that i can put k plus 1 all into n and the statement would still hold so we end up that this is v factorial over v minus, in brackets, k plus 1 factorial because we reduce v minus k by 1 because v minus k factorial is just d minus k times v minus k minus 1 times, times v minus k minus 1 times v minus k minus 2 times dot 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 times 2 times 1, right? As I showed you earlier. And so we end up that this is v factorial over v minus k plus 1 in brackets factorial times x to the power of v minus k plus 1. So if we assume the kth derivative follows the power rule, then that means the k plus first derivative follows the power rule. And as we've proven our base cases to be true from the basic power rule, that means since this is true, that means the second derivative follows the VPM power rule, the third derivative follows the VPM power rule, and we can put k equals 3 to show the fourth derivative follows the power rule, and so, and therefore the fifth does, and the sixth does, and the seventh does, and all positive integers will follow the power rule. If n is less than v, less than or equal to v, then the VPM power rule by induction Mathematical induction, we have proved the capital N to derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the power of n. Because there's two possibilities for what d to the power of the nth derivative of y with respect to x is given y is equal to x to the power of capital V for some non-negative integer v. What is the v derivative of x, y equals x to the power of v? Well, that's just equal to if we plug in the uh, VPM power rule because this does hold VPV times x to the power of v minus v which is equal to VPV times x to the power of zero we know this is one by my power my video on powers so that's equal to v factorial over zero factorial which is equal to v factorial because that zero factorial is equal to one correct so we've got this equal to v factorial which is just a constant right so this means that the v plus first derivative of y with respect to x is just going to be equal to zero because, well, v factorial is just a constant. And the derivative with respect to 
x of 0 is just going to be 0, so that means the b plus second derivative of y with respect to x is going to be equal to 0, and etc, and etc, and etc. So, yeah. In a nutshell, this is the VPN power rule, and if you're really... If you've got a lot of time in an exam and you're having to work out the nature of stationary points, you might want to, you probably should, don't, definitely don't use this. But if you've got time, you might as well test it out and see, check to see if your answer was correct or check to see if this, you can use the power rule, the VPN power rule of differentiation. And to be honest, it's just quite a nice rule, I think. And if you just memorize that NPR was equal to this product without having to look at the combinatorial insight behind it. Yeah, this is the VPN power rule of differentiation. Essentially, you could just boil it down to this and apply it, but this is how I came up with it. The choose function and why it's called the choose function rather than that just being known as a binomial coefficient. The final note I have is NPR and N capital CR are the terms on your calculator that express N choose R and NPR. So if you really want to, you can literally plug in V and N into this formula without having to type in factorials onto your calculator, at least the A-level specification calculator I'm using. And you could technically work out the nth derivative. I'm so grateful for you watching. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe and until next time.